The Medes. Who were these people? The Bible mentions two kings of the Medes, Ahasuerus and Darius, and many details about the things they did. But over the centuries, scholars have struggled to identify these men. That's because we know very little about the Medes, especially compared to the historical details we have regarding the Assyrian, Babylonian, and Persian kings. Historically, we have identified Ahasuerus and Darius as some of the already well-known Persian kings. These identifications are less than satisfying for many reasons. The first being that these famous Persian kings were Achaemenid, meaning they were descendants of a man named Achaemenes. These famous Persian kings were not of Median descent. They were not Medes. In this study, we're going to take a closer look at these people known as the Medes and see if we can determine the identity of Ahasuerus and Darius the Mede in the Bible. In the last hundred years or so, many thousands of clay tablets have been discovered in Mesopotamia, and two of these tablets specifically mention two of the last three Median kings, tying them to important historical events that are accurately dated with certainty. Let's now take a look at what has been discovered. When we think about the history and origins of modern-day Iran, we often think of the Persians. The Persian Empire was founded by Cyrus the Great in 550 BC, and in 539 BC, Cyrus conquered Babylon and overthrew the Neo-Babylonian Empire. After the fall of Babylon, Persia was the dominant world power for about the next 200 years. We have many Persian monuments and inscriptions that have survived until today, as well as the tombs of some of the Persian kings, including Cyrus the Great. Also Darius the Great, Xerxes, Artaxerxes, and more. We can travel to Iran today and view these tombs. But there was another people living in the ancient Zagros Mountains of what is now western Iran. These people were the Medes. Not much is known about the Medes compared to what we know about the Persians because we still haven't discovered any Median monuments, tombs, or inscriptions. However, before the Persians came to power, these Median people were an instrumental force along with the Babylonians in overthrowing the mighty Assyrian Empire. There were prophets in Jerusalem predicting the fall of the great Assyrian city Nineveh, but to most of the world, the fall of the Assyrian Empire would have been unthinkable at the time. Before the Medes came into power, they were small tribes living independently in the Zagros Mountains and often fighting amongst themselves. As we investigate the Medes during this weaker time period, we will find them mentioned in the annals of some of the Assyrian kings as well as in the Bible. Later, the Medes will begin to unite in order to defend themselves against the oppression of the Assyrians. As we investigate how the Medes come into power, we will look to the Greek historian Herodotus for information about the first Median kings. Although the work of Herodotus is very valuable, much of what he recorded is considered by scholars to be folklore so we should view his writings with some skepticism, especially in regards to the amount of years that he says a king may have reigned, and other historical details that can't be verified by other sources. The historian Xenophon mentions the last king of the Medes, so we will gather some information from Xenophon as well. We will also look at what the Bible has to say about the last two Median kings 
And from these two sources, Xenophon and the Bible, we'll see that these last two Median kings coincide with Cyrus the Great. Lastly, we will use the recently discovered and translated Mesopotamian Chronicles, where two different Median kings are mentioned by name, describing and accurately dating one, their detailed involvement in overthrowing Assyria, and two, the global power shift from the Medes to the Persians as the Median army hands their own king over to Cyrus the Great. In 539 BC, Cyrus the Great overthrew the Neo-Babylonian Empire and allowed the Jewish captives to return home, and he also funded the rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem, as is recorded in the Bible. Although Cyrus receives most of the credit in secular history for overthrowing Babylon, we will see that he did not do it alone. We will again see these people called the Medes, and how it was actually the Medo-Persian army that overthrew Babylon. These are the same Medes that were instrumental in overthrowing Assyria about a hundred years prior to the fall of Babylon. But let's first go back about 200 years before the fall of Babylon, to a time before Judah was taken into Babylonian captivity, and to a time before Israel was taken into Assyrian captivity. Let's go back to the year 745 BC, when a man named Tiglath Pileser took the throne in Assyria and began to expand Assyria into the great empire that it would become. Mm -hmm. 